and welcome to the next installment in the British Touring Car 2022 Race Reviews with myself, Brad, and Ben, who's alongside me as per usual. Say hello. Hello, and welcome back. Yep, we are covering the Alton Park Race Meeting, which has just happened this past uh, this past weekend. Uh, we're going to get into things in a short while, but uh, just before we do... Quickly, want to mention, as per usual, the link to the British Touring Car 2022 race reviews that we have done so far are all in the playlist. You can find them in the description below. Um, and fair to say that we had a bit more action uh, in three races than we did have at the uh, race meeting in Bruxton. Fair to say, is that not Ben? Yeah, definitely. People will see why as we go on. I'm not going to spoil which race had a bit more things going on in the others but you'll see why when we get along there exactly which leads us nicely into qualifying now again we'll keep qualifying quite brief but um it was a, an interesting session we had two red flags one was due to rick parfitt's infinity losing power which had it with a few minutes to go and um, they then pumped the time back up to 10 minutes because i think it was about six minutes to go uh, they put it at 10 minutes and then uh, there was another red flag which finished the session uh, due to Aiden Moffat's Infinity this time, losing the power and, well, end up uh, going off to the side uh, and out of the session. Uh, there was a notable incident between Jake Hill and, and Tom Chilton during this session uh, where Ingram came out the pits and he pushed Hill onto the grass, which forced them both back to the pits. Um, the top 22 cars were covered by a little over a second in this session. Uh, but overall, it was Tom Ingram who was your pole sitter with the time of 125.468 from Rory Butcher and Dan Lloyd who were just short of a tenth, uh, two tenths of a second and two and a half tenths of a second back respectively. So getting into race one. So there was a great start by Butcher to try and challenge Ingram at the start of the race. Uh, Ingram managed to hold on and hold off Butcher. Uh, Bobby Thompson had a lot of smoke coming out the rear of his car due to damage uh, to his bodywork on the right rear uh, wheel arch. George got, uh, Gamble also got damage on his rear bumper after going off track, uh, which eventually took it off completely on lap four. Uh, Jake Hill had damage after he hit Stephen Jelly on lap one, um, although from the TV cameras it looked as though he got it from behind by Jason Plato, which made him go into Jelly and then obviously uh, dented the front um, the, his, uh, his bonnet. Uh, lap 3 saw a great scrap uh, between Jake Kill, Sam Osborne, Ash Hand and Ollie Jackson uh, which resulted in Sam Osborne going wide, uh, Osborne sorry, going wide and losing places. Uh, Jason Plato also got stuck in with others around him as well. Uh, we had Ash Hand and Jake Kill collide at the hairpin on lap 4 which resulted in Hand losing 3 places in the space of a few metres. Uh, not long after this though we had George Gamble and... Patterson uh, come, uh, colliding and dropping down the order. Uh, Adam Morgan spun off coming up the hill um, near the end of that lap as well, meaning a terrible first race for the Sicily Motorsport squad. This also brought out the safety car. Uh, once the safety car went in, uh, Ash Sutton wasted no time getting past down Lloyd for third by putting a late uh, brake move on the high on to take the place. Um, Dan Lloyd lost another position to Shedden on the following lap. Uh, then we had Thompson and Hand doing a spot of rallying as they went wide uh, at the uh, Nickerbrook chicane complex uh, coming after coming over the hill. Uh, Ash Hand retired on lap 11 due to a brake fire at the Island Hairpin. Colin Turkington went around the outside of Dan Camish uh, for 5th place at the start of lap 15. We had Sutton and Shedden both take Butcher in a matter of corners for 2nd and 3rd. Uh, dropping Butcher two places in the space of like, literally five seconds or something. Uh, we had Jack, Butel and Will Powell come together at the end of lap 15, which caused Powell to retire in the car in the pits. Um, and that was about it in terms of action. Up at the front, though, it was Tom Ingram who finally broke his duct uh, at uh, his duct, sorry, at Alton Park and won from Ash Sutton and Gordon Shedden. However, post-race, the stewards handed Shedden a three-place grid penalty uh, for his part in the accident of Adam Morgan on lap 4, meaning it was Rory Butcher who picked up the trophy for third place. So your race results for race 1 were Tom Ingram was your race winner, Ash Sutton second with Rory Butcher in third, Colin Turkington fourth, Dan Camish in fifth, 
Gordon Shedden in 6th, Dan Lloyd in 7th who also snagged the fastest lap, Josh Cook in 8th, Dan Rowbottom in 9th and rounding out the top 10, his first top 10 of the year, was Ricky Collard. Uh, over to Ben for race 2. So for race 2 at Alton Park, Ingram leads, we're sort of not far behind and both have a really nice start over the rest of the field and just get slightly away, not, not by a lot but just slightly away, but just keeping with them but not enough, sort of car length in between. And then um, not far behind them, Moffat has a really nice go, go ahead, uh, getting a, he must have had a really good start because he got past Hill, Jelly and Rowbottom and then Hill sort of just like ended up following behind Moffat so he sort of gained a few bits and just kept with him which was quite good so he sort of like followed each other through and then after this Rowbottom then just goes off clean off into the grass uh, the grass obviously gets at the front of his car this will cause heating issues and it could cause fire with the brakes so by the end of the lap he then went into the pits to have all this removed Cook sends it with a really nice move just straight past Collard for a nice overtake on the first corner. That was really good to see. He just goes cleanly straight past him. Uh, and then on lap three, Sutton and Ingram get a nice lap, nice gap going to Butcher. And this is just, it's quite nice to see them just sort of getting, getting somewhere now. And it's good to see the race sort of develop into these little groups that are all going behind them. Um, Turkey Turn keeps right behind Butcher for lap four and keeps trying to get past, but he can't make anything stick, not quite just yet. Ingram and Sutton, they keep trading fastest lap after fastest laps each every other lap. It's quite interesting to see that. And um, so it's a nice good gap with them building off the rest of the field by even more at this point because Butcher's now having to defend Turkington. On lap eight, um, Hill gets ahead of Cook just just as you go into it and Turkington finally gets past Butcher just after the hairpin he just kept on the outside line just wouldn't give up anything just kept on it kept the power through and managed to just keep it straight on going straight past it was lovely to see it's good overtake Jade Edwards gets um, Gamble and Jackson as they go together where she just cleanly realises he was about to go together goes off slightly to the side and just goes straight past another lovely pass and then not long after, later in the lap, Morgan managed to catch back up to her and he got past her. So she, she gained one place at least from that. It was still really good to see how she, she figured that out that it was going to happen. Um, he, Morgan gained 17th from this. Shedden finally gets past on lap 10 and um, it's quite good to see that after he's been battling Camish for like most of the race, he... He just went straight clean on the inside at the hairpin. But I wouldn't say there was enough room really for him to get through. So because of this, he tapped Kamish and then still got past. Kamish managed to carry on, but you could clearly see really that if he'd not tapped Kamish, he might not have got past. Uh, Gamble gets past Jade, Jade Edwards to um, get behind his teammate as well on lap 12. So that was good to see. Um, Hill goes nicely on the inside of Lloyd at the hairpin and slides it slightly and then just carries on through, powers it straight up the hill, holding the inside line to gain 17th. That was quite nice, oh, no, to gain 7th, should I say. And that was nice to see as well because then it just really good. He just kept it hammered through. And then we come on to the final lap of the race. Tom Ingram wins and I'd say it was a really good race. Lovely to see. So your race two results are, your winner was Tom Ingram. Second was Sutton with the fastest lap. Third was Turkington. Fourth was Butcher. Fifth was Shedden. Sixth was Camish. Seventh was Hill. Eighth was Lloyd. Ninth was Cook. And tenth was Collard. Over to you for race three, Brad. Thanks, Ben. And for race three, we have quite an interesting uh accident i say interesting it's an instant uh instant packed race but most of it was on lap one now we will just say for the get-go um that since the accident did take place um that all three people that were involved in the accident so that is dan lloyd colin turkington and michael crease are all okay they're all fine um although dan lloyd did have to go to the hospital due to um i think he had a, a, a bruised lung or something uh, so best uh, best wishes, Dan, and hope you get well soon back for Croft. Uh, this before 
we get into this one. But um, yeah, to kind of kick things off with race three, so it saw an interesting uh, a start from all the uh, all of the right all the drivers. Um, so we had Stephen Jelly on pole and led away and everything. Everything was going fine until they came out of the island hairpin. So coming over the hill, uh, we had all three all three drivers that were involved were all at different spots obviously coming over the hill uh so first thing was that we had um we had collard tagging lloyd which spun him around and smashed him into barriers he then came back into the middle of the track turkington had nowhere to go did put the brakes on but wasn't able to brake fast enough um not his fault again literally you're trying to brake from 100 miles now to naught and that's not going to happen in a touring car um, so he ended up smashing pretty much engine block first into uh, Lloyd. That then punted Lloyd back off the circuit. Kreese took avoiding action, uh, but unfortunately went the wrong way, uh, even though he, he backed off uh, and then hit uh, the side of Lo uh, Lloyd's Hyundai. So Lloyd actually had three hits. There was the barrier Turkington's car, which was the most brutal one, and then a side impact from Kreese. Uh, in the middle of all this commotion as well, we had Bobby Thompson who ran wide. He took out the quick fit sign with Sutton and Ingram also taken to the grass, which meant that they both had to pit to get the grass removed. Obviously, this accident unsurprisingly did bring out the safety car. It's also worth noting just before this happened is that Hill, uh, Jake Hill didn't have a great start on that first lap. He went wide at turn one. Uh, locked his brakes going into turn one and again at the island hairpin where he completely locked the brakes up and slid right down the order to the back. Um, but um, once the racing did resume, the action did not stop there. Uh, we had Tom Chilton who took out Sam Osborne uh, just before they went over the hill. Um, and speaking of hill, uh, Jake managed to move forward as well as Sutton and Ingram. They all started their fight back after having the problems on lap one. Uh, lap 9, however, as we got into, obviously the laps tipped by, but as we got to lap 9, we saw a feisty scrap between Jason Plato, Adam Morgan, and Aaron Taylor-Smith all battling for position. Um, battles did carry on going, as Hill, Patterson, and Edwards all scrapped for 15th place. Then you throw in Sutton as well, um, at, behind all this. It really saw a, a very close race in between a lot of them. Um, with Ollie Jackson was at the helm of this one. This was a couple of laps later when we saw uh, Jackson holding up a train, which included Ingram and Sutton, uh, as well as, like I said, Hill, Patterson and Edwards. It was really great to watch on screen. For anyone that was there uh, in person will know how great it was. Even on, the, on TV coverage as well, it was really great to watch. Uh, at the end of lap 14 onto lap 15, we also saw Rick Parfit retire, uh, which damaged to the front of his Infinity. Unknown as to what he'd hit, it looked like he might have spun off possibly, but he did have a bit of damage to the front of the Infinity. Um, but apart from that, there wasn't too much much more action to cover in that race, other than, like I said, the main one, with you, uh, which was the start. Um, but in the end, though, it was Stephen Jelly who held on to win from Aidan Moffat and Josh Cook. Um, Ricky Collard did cross the line in third, but he received a five-second time penalty uh, during this race of being out of his grid spot before the race started um, and in the end he ended up finishing seventh in the results but um, just to run down race three so it was Stephen Jelly who was your race winner Aidan Moffat was second with Josh Cook in third then we had Shedden in fourth Butcher fifth Camish sixth Collard seventh after having that five second time penalty Morgan eighth Ashand came home in ninth and Aaron Taylor Smith round out the top ten with the fastest lap going to Jake Hill who finished in 13th. So what does that do to the driver standings? Well, surprisingly, Josh Cook is still at the head of the realm, uh, ahead of Tom Ingram. However, after race two, it is worth noting that Ingram and Cook were tied on points with Sutton three points behind. Because Ingram and Sutton did not score, neither did Turkington, it meant that Cook was able to extend his lead further. Um, so Josh Cook is still leading the way on 169 points, ahead of Tom Ingram, and Ash Sutton, who are 15, 18 points back respectively. Then we have Colin Turkington, who again, like I said, didn't score in the last race uh, on 140. Then we've got Jake Hill in 5th, Gordon Shedden in 6th, Rory Butcher 7th, Adam Morgan 8th, Dan Lloyd in 9th, and Dan Kamish rounds out the top 10. So Ben, who were your winners from the weekend? Um, 
Ingram and Sutton, because obviously they both did really well. Like, it's nice to see how well they did, especially in, like, races one and two, more than anything else for them two, really. Obviously, Ingram, he got the two race wins, you know. Uh, Sutton did really well to keep with him and get fastest laps and all that sort of thing, so it was, it was good to see them. And then my other winner of the weekend, or person who did really well, I'd say was Jade Edwards, just for the fact that she kept it quite good all weekend. She didn't go for anything too risky, as far as like I could see from my perspective. Um, she did well to get past like the um, Gamble and Jackson as they got together and realised that by the looks of it, it seemed like she realised it was about to get together and she sort of just back to the side away from them so she knew she could sort of get round them or at least be safely away from when they did. So I'd say, yeah, them three really, overall. Yeah, I think, to be honest, I mean, uns unsurprisingly, I think my winners will probably be the same as yours, Ingram and Sutton for the first and seconds that they got. Um, I think Hill didn't do too bad. I mean, granted, there wasn't any spectacular results, but given how he ended up, um, I think he had it all to do, and he did lock up a, a few times and everything, so he did struggle with the BMW, but I still think he did, didn't do too bad. Um, also, probably worth mentioning as well, is Kamish kept in the points for Napa. Um, just, just to mention that, I think Toyota as a whole did quite well this weekend with Butcher and... and Collard both getting the top 10 in all three races so good haul of points for the uh for the Toyota squad um and yeah obviously again Jade Edwards definitely got to agree with that one because she got the Jack Sears trophy uh in race which I believe is her first ever one so yeah congratulations to Jade Edwards on that one um but I think that's gonna just about cover it um for all of us from both myself and for Ben let us know uh, about your thoughts on this weekend's race in Alton Park. Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Let us know down in the comments, uh, especially if we've missed anything. Obviously, we don't manage to catch everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, let us know down in the comments what you thought. And until the next time, we will see you in a few weeks' time uh, when we'll be at Croft. So until then, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, ta -ra. Bye.